All right, Rick, if you're the Steelers at 20, Amarius Mims, right tackle is there. Jackson Powers Johnson, center slash guard is there. Who are you taking? Uh, is this even a question in my mind? You need help at right tackle. I am taking Jackson Powers Johnson. No questions asked. Okay. I think Steelers fans agree with you. Even though Bro even though you admitted, I believe Amarius Mims is better coming out than Broderick Jones when he's healthy. No, I don't know that. <laughs> all right. You're guessing. Yeah, we're all let's be real. We're all guessing. I know, but you're really guessing when a guy's <laughs> not on the field that much. All right. Someone who is on the field and someone who you tried to kill on set, even though Steelers fans desperately want him in Pittsburgh, Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh great football player, even funnier in person, making fun of Rick. That was a, a nice change of pace. You two warmed up to each other. I think that was your, one of your favorite interviews or your favorite interview? What, one of my favorites of all time. Okay, yeah, he was great. If you haven't Sketchers. Seen, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you can go watch it on YouTube. It is uh, The whole interview is great, even though at the end he does give Rick a hard time about his drip. I had to call my sons and ask, what the, is that a good thing or a bad thing when he said he liked my drip? Oh, man. Unbelievable. All right, Jackson. I'm Power. all dripped out. You are all dripped out indeed. What's your comp for Jackson Power Johnson? We've talked to him to death. Let's start there. Creed Humphrey. Oh, man. You can't see that. It says Creed Humphrey. Yeah. Okay. That's a bad sign for you, buddy. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about this. How high can JPJ get drafted? Let's start here at 14. Seattle. The Saints? Saints. No. Seattle is 16, 100%, I feel like. Yes. Yes. Okay. So 16 is the highest. Uh, I don't, I mean, he doesn't get past Dallas at 24. No. Unless no. there's a unless there's a, a tackle or someone, a left tackle they love that happens to be there. No. By the way, in our mock draft that we did for CBS Sports Network that now you can watch on the YouTube channel at NFL on CBS, Rick and I swung a deal. Cowboys traded up from 24 to 13 to get Ola Fashionu. That actually feels sort of realistic. Maybe. But they've been <laughs> pretty conservative this offseason so far. Yeah, they haven't done anything. Maybe that's what Jerry was holding out for. He said they were going to go crazy, and he met on draft night. We'll see. All right. Creed Humphrey. That's a slam dunk comp, Rick. Way to go. Next up, Troy Fatanu, who plays left tackle at Washington, doesn't wear knee pads. Has shorts on, essentially. Rick has docked him a half a round grade because of it. Volleyball player coming out of high school. He's a good athlete. Really good athlete. Is he good enough to play tackle in the NFL? I think some teams will look at him at left tackle until he proves wrong. You yeah. know, may not be the ideal length uh, or arm length, but I think, you know, neither was Bakhtiari when he came out and ended up being a Pro Bowl left tackle for – the Green Bay Packers. So I think some teams will look at him at left tackle. Other teams will look at him to slide like a Peter Skaronsky or even uh, Vera Tucker, Elijah Vera Tucker, yeah. when he came out, played at left tackle at USC and slid inside. So I think it'll depend on the team where they want to line him up and play. And I'm not so sure he isn't athletic enough to line up and snap the ball at center as well. Uh, Vera Tucker had real like 32, maybe sub 32 inch arms. Um, Faltine, who came in with 34 and a half inch arms, so that checks that box if you're concerned. 32 and a half inch vertical, 6'3", almost 6'4", and 317 pounds. Um, what would your comp for him? Like, he's an athletic left just tackle. just kind of went through him. You think he's – Elijah Barry Tucker was a good athlete, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'll go with Bakhtiari. Okay. I don't remember him coming out. Was yeah. he a good athlete coming out? He was a good athlete. He had short arms, and everybody was projecting him inside a guard. And he was a nasty football player in a positive way. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's let's go through the drill here. Who gets drafted first, Jackson Powers Johnson or Troy Fatanu? I'm going with Jackson Powers Johnson. Okay. So that that means you think bottom half of the first round, 16 to 32 for Fatanu. Yep. If you're the Cowboys there and say Jackson Powers Johnson's gone, yep. you're considering him, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, he ain't going to be Tyler Smith. I don't think maybe he is good luck to him, but, um, I don't yeah. think he's getting either of those two are getting, where's Miami picking 21. Yeah. They're not going past 21. Okay. All right. Next up, 
Graham Barton. We've been talking about him since the summer. Left tackle at Duke. He's going to kick inside. I'm going to give you my comp, and then you can run with it after you give me a high five. Uh, I think he's going to take the Zion Johnson path out of BC. Yeah, I think he's more athletic. Really? Yeah. I like Zion Johnson. I did, too. Okay. All right. That's that's great news for Graham Barton. Limited as a... I think this kid was more functional left tackle than when I did Zion Johnson when he came out because he was okay. I'll give you that. Projected inside the or senior year, where the year before he came out was in a guard, but I watched him at a left tackle. And he was much better a guard. This kid was functioning as a left tackle, although I don't think you know. I think he'll have his struggles at left tackle. So uh, this guy is also another guard center combo and very tough physical grit, whatever you want to put on him, football player. How do you look at a tackle um, in college and say, okay, that guy has to move inside? And not not only move inside, but how, you have a sense that he might be successful inside. Well, that's where you're projecting everything. But it starts like, I don't know what uh, Barton's arm length is uh, in measurables. You. But the one thing I knew is that if they ran, and I don't think these were his numbers, but if they ran slower than 5.25, and they had 32 and a half or shorter arms that guys that were drafted at left tackle, high draft picks and lined up at left tackle, all six of them failed. All right. 32 and seven eighths inch arms. <laughs> He's going right up against it. So you have to be special to have sub 33 inch arms and play tackle Left tackle. Yep. From, from jump street. All right. So there you go. And in your, you know, years of, eyeballing these guys for 30 plus years you, you can get a sense if they have shortish arms based on the way they play i would imagine without knowing yeah 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 i mean you can see it like if a defensive end is has his one arm in his chest and he's trying to lock out and they go only to the guy's elbow then you know he has short arms um we haven't talked about patrick paul in a while out of houston but just for comparison his wingspan is 86 and a quarter inches and grant barton is 79 and three quarters inches. So you're losing six and a half, seven inches right there to your point. Which is um, significant. All right. All that said, do you think he makes it into the first round? I have him as like a fringe first, second round guy. Yep. Not out of the top 10 in the second. And I could see bottom of the potentially bottom of the first. I'm trying to think 49ers, maybe. Maybe uh, Detroit, Detroit lost Jonah Jackson, but they did sign who they sign. They signed a guard. Uh, Yeah. I'll look I, it up so we know. Um, Kevin Zeitler, they signed. So, yeah. And they, they still, still have, can use, they can still, I think they'll go corner, especially with the Cam Sutton news coming out yesterday. Yeah. That that's his whole complexion. Yep. Um, great draft. All right. Next up, the aggregate ranking, Zach Frazier, who was your number five. He was not my number. Three. West Virginia center. We haven't talked a lot about him. He's a good player. I think I like him a little more than you. We've talked about him briefly. Are you have you changed your tune on him? Are you no, you- I, I liked him as a football player. I think he's smart. I think he's probably a center only. That's the only issue I had with him. A one position guy. Okay. A four time state wrestling champion. I think he only lost two matches his entire life. I heard an interview with him and said couple of times guys just came out, shook his hand and just forfeited because they didn't want to go against them in high school in the, on the mat. Um, so, uh, great start when those guys, especially at center have that wrestling background because they know leverage, they have strong hands. I think that he played better as a junior than a senior. I know he's coming off a broken leg, I believe in November that he got hurt. Um, but tough, smart, uh, everything good athlete, not great athlete, but those guys end up lining up and I think playing, playing a long time. And he's bigger than I thought he was going to be. That's the thing. I was just looking up some guys from last year. Uh, John Michael Schmidt, who was drafted by the Giants, you liked a lot, was six, three and a half, 301. Also a wrestler, Joe Tipman, who was drafted by the Jets out of Wisconsin. He's enormous at six, six, 313. But when you look at Zach Frazier, he's six, two and a half, 313. And what he's, was, he's what a little was bigger build than a, your typical center. Avila. What was he last year? Steve. I'm, 
Say that again. Steve Avila. Oh, let's see what Steve Avila was. He was thick. Yeah. He played was, guard last year for, uh, but he may move inside for. The that range. was kind of I was looking at. Steve Avila. Oh boy, six three 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 thirty two. Now that's a grown man. Yeah. yeah, not as thick as Steve. All right, so Zach Frazier top of the second round potentially, and I, I'll tell you this: uh, Steelers fans, if they don't get Jackson Powers Johnson, I'll put it this way: How do you like Amarius Mims at twenty, and then at fifty one, Zach Frazier? Who's the hell are they going to throw the ball to? They got to get a receiver at some point. I'll ask you this. What's deeper, the center class or the wide receiver class? The wide receiver class. So you can circle back and get one at 84. Okay. Yeah, there'll be a lot of to pluck from down there. <laughs> Debo, that old lady beat the crap out of uh, Rick today in <laughs> pickleball. He is on one. She wore him out. Did you score a point at least? Can we move on in life? <laughs> that means no. He didn't score a single point against an 85-year-old woman. That's called getting pickled. <laughs> All right, here we are. We're down the home stretch here. Wrap this bad boy up. Number five on the aggregate rankings, Cooper BB. You had him as number four on your list. I had him as number four on my list. All right. Kansas. We've been talking about Kansas or Kansas State. I always forget. Kansas State. Thank you, Kansas State. We've been talking about him since the summer. And he's sort of flown under the radar throughout, even though he's a really good football player. Dominic Pooney, I think, is from Kansas. He's the other t- uh, kid that's going to get drafted. So Cooper BB, let me give you his height and weight because he's a big, big, big fella. Big, thick guy. Oh, uh, 6'3", 322. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I think he d- elected not to participate down at the Senior Bowl because he said he had good tape in an interview I did with him, which I think hurt him. Uh, and all of a sudden, he kind of went by. You don't hear his name buzzing a lot, but this guy is lined up at both tackle spots, both guard spots. He's a guard at the next level. Maybe better fit for a gap scheme because of his mass and his ability to create movement at the point. Uh, as long as he has bumpers on either side of him, he is stout in pass protection. Um, so I think this guy is uh, going to be a second rounder. Ooh. I think this is a guy that, did he work out at the combine? Yeah. Um, well, I have his measurable. Yeah, his three cone, seven four four, vert twenty seven and a half, nine foot broad. Did he run? Five oh three. Okay, that's good. So yeah, he just participated at the combine, so that'll put him back on. But I think he would have helped himself also down there at the uh, Senior Bowl as well, just to. Uh, but I think he's a solid second round pick. Um, now if he was in the second round and I'm just saying Detroit was there, I think he's one of those Detroit type gritty football players that they like to take. Um, and I think he's going to be a starting guard in the league, uh, for a long time. So Detroit picks 61 at the bottom of the second, and then they pick 73 at the top of the third. So that might be the range. If you're looking for a Cooper BB, it feels like one of the name I'll mention before we get out of here, who I like a lot. Christian Haynes, the uh, yep. guard, potentially slash center from UConn. There's a guy that really helped himself because yep. he went down to the senior bowl and performed. Then he did combine. Who was your – I had uh, just for my comp, just to um, – for Cooper BB was Will Hernandez when he came out of Texas Tech. That's that's a better one than mine. I had um, James Daniels. James Daniels is a little lighter than Cooper. Okay, I think – or Texas El, – was it Texas El Paso? Who'd you say again? Will Will Hernandez. Oh, yeah. Let me see. I think went, it was Texas El Paso. Went to the uh, Giants, right? Yep. You got it, UTEP. Yeah, you saved yourself there from some angry comments directed at me. By the way, Christian Haynes was a guy who – we and we talked to Braden Fisk about this, who got into it with uh, Jordan Jefferson at LSU uh, when he ripped his helmet off at the senior world practices and, and chucked it to the sidelines, <laughs> which was uh, – Christian didn't back down, and, and Fisk made that point, and, and that's how he plays. And I think he has a chance to be a day two guy as well. 